Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Joe Landolina. He's CEO and co-founder of Cresselon. Now, Cresselon is a Brooklyn-based biotechnology company that develops, manufactures, and markets hemostatic medical devices utilizing the company's proprietary gel technology. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Joe Landolina, thank you for joining. Neil, thank you very much for taking the time. It's great to be here. Well, briefly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I'm a chemical engineer by training. I did both my graduate and my undergraduate work at NYU, uh, Polytechnic School of Engineering here in New York. Uh, but before that, I was lucky enough to have gotten a pretty early start. My, my grandfather was a chemist who worked for Hoffman LaRoche and later in life founded a winery. So I grew up on a vineyard with the chemistry lab across the street from my house. So mm-hmm. from the age of eight or nine years old, I was working in a lab. Uh, and, and that led me to starting Cresselon at the age of 17 in undergrad. And over the last 12 years, we've developed it into, it into what it is today. So what is Cresselon's mission? Cresselon's mission is simple. It's to save lives. And, mm-hmm. and, and we do that by first addressing the 3 million bleeds that happen every single year in the U.S. in pets. Uh, so we started as an animal health company. Mm-hmm. And with our recent submission to the FDA, and we're looking forward to eventually being able to expand this mission to saving human lives shortly. You mentioned starting out as an animal care company. What's the current standard of care with animals, veterinary care, human bleeds as well? You you talked about many, many bleeds every year. Describe the products that you're developing that will address these issues. Sure. So today, unfortunately, uh, in, in most uh, in most markets, the, the, the standard of care is what I call pressure and a prayer. It's... Uh, and whether whether you're using technology uh, that, that's relatively new or, or technology that's been on the market for decades, everything that's out there today requires a significant amount of manual pressure to stop bleeding, now, even if you're using an adjunct like thrombin uh, or, or a fibrin sealant. I mean, it still requires some preparation. It still requires anywhere from two up to 10 minutes of compression in order to get bleeding under control. And if you're talking about very traumatic or very large bleeds, more than likely, topical hemostatics uh, will not be able to address bleeds that, that, that are massive uh, and would require a much more robust surgical intervention. And the technology that we have today is a plant-based scaffold. So it's a gel that is derived from two polymers that are extracted from the cell wall of algae. And most importantly, what that material does is it reassembles on contact with tissue. Um, so first and foremost, it creates a mechanical barrier, uh, and that immediately stops bleeding. No preparation, no special storage conditions, no pressure. And in average, in two and a half seconds or less, you can put this onto something as severe as a spurting arterial injury um, or as, um, as diffuse and as difficult to treat as a complicated soft tissue injury, something like liver, kidney, spleen, uh, and anything in between. And you get this stopped immediately. And then it allows the body, uh, because the scaffold is non-porous, the clot that forms does not form inside of the gel. So you can take the gel away after a minute or two. And what you're left with is a fully formed endogenous clot, meaning a clot formed by the patient themselves uh, underneath. Uh, So you have effectively a wound um, where uh, you've taken away all of the bleeding. And as a surgeon, you can immediately start operating into a dry field with better visualization and better outcomes for the patient. How is it possible that your technology is so far and above the current standard? What, what, is, what is it that significantly differentiates your product? Uh, why is it so advanced? Sure. So I, I actually, I blame myself because when I started this, I was 17 years old. And I didn't know that what I was working on should not have worked. I thought I was just being a bad chemist. And as a result, I kept trying and trying and trying. And what we ended up with is a mechanism that does not work like the two major families of hemostatics that are on the market today. So the the type of hemostatic that's been on the market for decades at this point um, work by absorbing blood, things like gauzes or sponges that allow concentration of blood factors and cells at the surface of the wound that allow for for more rapid clotting than you'd find uh, if you were just applying pressure alone. Uh, And and those products work somewhere in the five to seven minute mark. And the second family works by taking a substrate like that and adding a drug to it or adding something that functions as a clotting agent, which will accelerate the clotting cascade. Um, and, and things, those are products like thrombin um, hemostatics or thrombin-containing uh, hemostatics. Uh, and, and those products will work somewhere in the 
two to three minute range with pressure, uh, mm-hmm. but will require significant special storage and preparation and so on. Uh, and what we do is we neither work by absorbing the blood nor by adding a, a, a therapeutic or a drug to accelerate the biochemistry. Instead, we've come up with a, a third mechanism altogether, which is to create this responsive type of matrix. And in doing that, we allow the body to do what it does best. We allow the body's biochemistry to work naturally, uh, but we create a material that, that really functions as just a great adhesive. But even in the face of significant bleeding, even in the face of pulsatile pressure, now, this material does not move. It stays in place and it stays there until you want it to be removed. And while it does that, it allows the body to create a scaffold underneath. Um, so in short, it started as a little bit of an accident and something that I found because I didn't know enough to know not to uh, not to try some of these things. Uh, but uh, what we ended up developing it into is a next generation static uh, that, that works completely differently than anything else that's on the market. It's almost as if you've fooled the body into thinking that your product is its own skin. More or less. And really, the way that I like to think of it is that it's just if you give the body or if you give all of these molecules that, that work together to form a blood clot, a surface or a scaffold uh, that just helps and supports them. Mm. It allows the formation of a much better fiber and patch okay. uh, that doesn't have chemical interaction with our matrix. Uh, but most importantly, that fiber and patch that forms doesn't become entangled with our gel. Uh, okay. And I, I like to think of it as you cut yourself shaving and you have a square of toilet paper and you put that on there the clot that forms will be inside of the pores of the toilet paper. So when you peel the toilet paper off, the clot gets ripped off with it. Mm-hmm. Or if you move, or, and especially in surgery, you have a very dynamic environment. The patient's bleeding, the patient's moving and breathing, uh, and things start to dislodge. And if you have your matrix entangled with the clot, it's very likely to disrupt itself. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's one of the reasons why pressure is required for just about everything else in the market. Because in a dynamic environment, you need to hold it in place. Our product holds itself in place. Uh, looking ahead uh, three, five years or so, where do you see your product being used and what impact can you see Cresselon having on the industry, on the on this space as a whole? Sure. The thing that most excites me about this material, about this technology, is that this is a one-size-fits-all solution for all types of bleeds. And, and this goes all the way from patients who may be on blood thinners uh, who need a product to stop even minor nicks and scrapes that that are external, all the way to the most massive severe trauma and and all the way back uh, to uh, very complicated keyhole or laparoscopic surgeries. And and, and so the next three to five years for us looks like a global expansion. And and Crestalon today is gearing up first and foremost to start global sales of our animal health product. Uh, But most excitingly, uh, we're also gearing up to start entering the human market verticals. So five years from today, success for Cresselon means having this product in every single environment where it's bleeding, from the shelf of a drugstore um, all the way into operating rooms that, that are handling some of the most complicated and, uh, and severe surgeries uh, that are being done today. Well, if you would, Joe, give us a website where we can learn more about your company and your products. Of course, our website is www.cresselon.com. Well, Joe, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I appreciate you joining us here this morning and giving us this information. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Joe Landolina, CEO and co-founder of Cresselon. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.